All right, Shalom. As always, I'm thankful and I'm grateful to be able to come out here once again to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And according to the Holy Bible, you are the biblical Israelites. This is based off of your father's genetic line. It's about paternal and agnate relations and which determines whether or not you are of Jacob. This is not a so-called black or white thing. Mingling those two shades together, you get gray. And there are no gray areas in this ministry. Okay? I also come out here to preach and to prophesy to these other nations because our people are mingled amongst them. And to let them know their future and their judgment also. And before I can get started any further, I have to give all thanks and praises to the power of Israel. Not the power of any other nation because I don't come in my own name. And what is his name? Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Wawrakak Wadash. Peace, blessings, and much respect to the true, sincere elders and apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders and apostles within Israel who rule well. Okay? Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth. To the rest of the church who believe as well, you men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons and daughters also. The water to Yahweh Shai because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. This lesson's going to be shorter than usual, but I'm going to feed you something and Lord willing it's edifying. So I want to touch on the book of James chapter 4. In verse 8, draw nigh to the power and he will draw nigh to you. So you have to approach the Lord. You have to show effort. And if you show effort, then the Lord will show how he exists. He'll show how he, he protects you. He He's your everything, man. He's your weapon. He's your protection. Okay. He's your guidance. He's your answers. He's everything. But once we show that we're trying, that's when the Lord draws nigh to us. That's when he draws near unto us. And the best time to do it is while he may be found. The thing is, a lot of you Israelites, you're not going to seek the Lord while he may be found. A lot of you are going to seek the Lord when it's too late. All right. Draw nigh to the power and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Ye double minded. So we have to have purified minds. We have to have pure intent. We have to be in the spirit of being brotherly. We have to be in the spirit of doing things in righteousness. Okay? Having a clear conscience. Not doing things with a polluted or a defiled intent. You shouldn't want to be around a brother because secretly you're trying to get closer to his woman. That's wickedness, man. You shouldn't be around a brother. Because you want to exercise dominion over that man. We being in this ministry, we should have a clean heart. We should have pure intent. Okay? James chapter 4 and 8 again. Draw nigh to the power and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So how do you make yourself purified according to the Bible? Now, when you go to these churches, they'll tell you that if you, how you doing? They'll tell you that if you dip your head in some water, that's how you're baptized. Well, that's symbolic. The real baptism comes through the words of the heavenly father, through his son, his only begotten son, who you will call Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh Shai. Okay. Let's touch on Ephesians chapter five. In verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So how do you purify your hearts? You purify your hearts through the washing of water by the word. Now, within the word, it tells us how we are to be towards each other. Seeing that we're at the end, when you look at the debt 
of America, we're in a $2 trillion deficit right now. Things aren't looking good for this place. Seeing that we're in World War III right now, you see Russia and China linking up. That ain't good for America, okay? You have um, Ukraine invading parts of Russia. And then what's going to happen? You know, NATO and the EU eventually is going to have to get involved. You know, all these different allies of America and these different allies of Russia, they're all going to get involved. But all these things are leading to the end of what's known as Esau's kingdom. And we're going into our world. And if we want to make it on the first go around, we have to make sure that we have pure intent. Just like when you're out here, right? You might see a man walking with his wife and he might have a beautiful wife. But here you are, you staring at her ass. She might have her feet out. You might be a man who's into a woman with, with uh, beautiful feet, right? She got nice legs. You can't keep your eyes off of it. That's not coming out here with pure intent. See, the fact that we come out here with these garments with the borders of blue, okay? The borders of, the borders of blue represent the law, statutes, and commandments. This isn't a fashion statement. You'll have men out here with these garments on, okay, with the border of blue, and they'll be lusting on another man's wife in his head, okay? Can't take his eyes off of a certain woman knowing that she's taken. That's not teaching with a pure intent. You, you have to be washed. You have to be cleansed through this word. It's this word that makes us renewed. That he might be sanctified or that he might sanctify, excuse me, and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So this word is in comparison unto water, purified water. And that's how we cleanse ourselves. That's how we walk clean. Then when you start going contrary to what the words say, that's when you start polluting yourself. That's when you start doing things that are contrary to the Heavenly Father. So we have to make sure we have a pure heart, that we have pure intent, seeing that we want to make it up out of here. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Why? Because... You'll have pure intent. So when it comes to teaching this truth, you're not coming with the ulterior motive. When it comes to being around brothers, you're not going amongst brothers with an ulterior motive. You're, you're a sincere type of fellow, right? You don't um, have the mind frame of a villain. You have the mind frame of justice and righteousness, okay? That's how you have pure intent. And then when things are pure unto you, you're going to carry yourself different than everybody else. See, the people of this world, they'll take cannabis, which the Bible doesn't speak ill on cannabis, but they'll take cannabis, roll it up in a blunt, and then smoke it. Well, they're turning something that's supposed to be good and pure, and now they're defiling it, okay? Someone who's of this world, they'll take what's righteous, and they'll totally pollute it. They'll take the Bible, break it down wrong, right there's nothing wrong with drinking but then these people in this world they might have a drinking problem to where now they're drunks they're alcoholics but to the pure all things are pure the pure are going to try to do things according to righteousness okay have a righteous and pure intent so unto the pure all things are pure and who are those that are pure those who are purified by the words of the heavenly father and his son but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. And that's most people. Most people are unbelieving. They're defiled. They're no good. And the Heavenly Father is going to discard them. He's only looking for a small number known as the elect. And if you're not of the elect, well, then you'll just have to be awaiting your destruction. Okay? Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. So if you're a non-believer... You're not pure. If you're double-minded, you're not pure. Okay? But even their mind and conscience is defiled. That's why we have to make sure our heart, our conscience is purified. And how is it going to be purified? Through the word. Again, because this word is likened unto water. Okay? Okay? 
first Peter's chapter one in verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth, because if you don't obey the truth, if you don't believe in the truth, you're defiled. You're not pure to the pure. All things are pure. That's why we're hitting you with this pure truth. Someone who's defiled, they're not trying to read out the scriptures. Someone who's defiled, they're breaking the scriptures down wrongfully. Someone who's defiled, they're just totally left field. They're not about what the scriptures say. They're not about making a life, um, a life changing decision that requires effort, that requires them to draw nigh to the Lord. They expect the Lord to just do everything for them. We're not supposed to be negligent in this ministry. Okay? So seeing again that we're in a two trillion dollar deficit, this economy is looking to collapse at any time. An EMP attack is likely at any given time because we're in the season where darkness is about to come. The Lord is about to remove the children of light off the streets and he's about to bring in darkness. So if your mind, if your if your conscience isn't purified now, okay, if you're defiled now, when these things come, when all hell breaks loose, the Lord is not going to fend for you. He's not going to protect you. In fact, he's going to be more of an enemy towards those who have a uh, defiled conscience. All right. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. So we we are to have a uh, sincere love towards each other. We're supposed to be pure in our doings, have pure intent. But the people of this world, they'll try to do nice things for you just to secretly get close to you because they're trying to overthrow you. They're trying to find out information. Us brothers, we shouldn't be in that spirit, man. And if you are in that spirit, the Most High will kill you. All right? See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. So we're supposed to love each other fervently. You're supposed to have a, a earnest love when it comes towards the brotherhood. You're supposed to have pure intent when it comes to the brotherhood because those who don't, you're not going to make it up out of here once destruction comes. And destruction is closer than what we know. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 3. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. So the Lord's eyes are on the truth. But a lot of men are out here speaking lies because... They don't have a pure intent. A lot of men have a defiled conscience. That's why they're adulterous. That's why they're involved with witchcraft. That's why they're involved with all sorts of abominations. And they don't want to get their act together. All right. So, O oh Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? So the Lord, his eyes are upon the truth. So all you Israelites who don't have a pure conscience, you in trouble. Thou has stricken them, but they have not grieved. So our people are constantly being afflicted, but you're not making no changes, right? Thou has consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. Most people don't care. Okay. Most people are not going to be corrected. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. So most of the Lord's people are not going to return. Most of the Lord's people are going to remain rebellious until the Lord kills them. All right. And at the end of the day, a lot of people, they might think that this is a joke or this is something to take lightly, but it's not something that should be taken as a joke. There's nothing funny about judgment. There's nothing funny about what the Lord is going to bring to the earth. And those who don't have pure intent, who claim to be of this household of faith, the Lord is going to seek you out and destroy you. Okay. Let's go to Psalms chapter 15 and verse 1. A Psalm of David. Yahweh, 
Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in the holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. So the Lord is looking upon the truth. We're supposed to be speaking the truth. We're supposed to have um, pure intent. Okay, I come out here doing this in hopes to reel in the elect. And although it looks foolish, it's it's a uh, it's a spirit within me. I have pure intent to where I'm willing to look silly because that's what the Lord requires of us. And at the end of the day, and you got any questions, bro? Just just one listen. Uh, you're an Israelite. You look like you might be from Judah. Are you a Negro, supposedly? No, I'm just, just, just a man of God. Just a man of God? Well, a man of God will have to be an Israelite. Okay. So what I'm telling you is you're an Israelite. You look like you could be a Negro. Now, if you are a Negro, based off your dad's side, you'd be from the tribe of Judah. The people of God, they're known as the Israelites. We came from a man named Israel. His name was first Jacob. And later became Israel. And what happened was he had hold on, he had twelve sons, right? And we, we come out of his sons. All right. So these people don't want to listen. That's why the Lord gonna kill these people, man. He gonna destroy all these people, bro. The Lord is not with these people, man. I hate you people. I hate you people so much, man. The Lord hates you people. I can't stand you fucking people, man. The Lord gonna kill you and your family. <laughs> Get tired of these people, man. You get tired of them. Psalms chapter 15 and verse 2. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. So the Lord is looking for those who speak the truth. And most people ain't speaking the truth. Most people are in the lies, man. And that's why the Lord is going to destroy a lot of people. You know, people think this is a game, right? And then when the Lord kill them, we're supposed to feel bad. We're supposed to cry. We're supposed to shed tears like Tupac, right? When we've been out here warning these people over and over again, and what do they do? They, they uh, shun the word away. They don't want to listen, all right? That's why, like, at the end of the day, when destruction does come, I'm telling you, I'm laughing at you people, man. I'm not going to feel bad for y'all. So let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2 and verse 3. And he said unto me, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation. So our people don't want to listen. So the Lord going to kill them, man. We ain't out here to play with nobody. And see, the thing is, a lot of you false prophets, you've been lying to these people for so long. Now these people think they can do whatever the hell they want and the Lord ain't going to do nothing to them. So now seeing that we're in World War III, when the nuclear missiles get sent off and people get drafted off in the war, whatever the case may be, all we're going to do is tell you we told you so. We told you, we tried to warn you, all right? And he said unto me, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are imputed children. So our people are very difficult to deal with, man. Like when that man came over here, that young man came over here, he came over here like he was humble. But that's what people do. They always do that, man. That's why I can't wait till the Lord gives me a sword. I'm going to chop y'all's fucking heads off, man. When Yahweh Shai gives me that power, hey, you can run this video back. You can try to make me look like I'm crazy. When the Lord gives me that power, all the Lord's enemies, I'm looking to fucking kill you. All right? For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, thus saith the Lord power. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. And by the time they realize it, it's going to be too late. They're going to realize a prophet was among them when they catch in hell. But now that the Lord is, you know, seeking out our people, they're not trying to seek him out. Let's go to Hosea. chapter 5 and 15 I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction they will seek me early so when Yahweh by Shemiahwashai pulls back from you Israelites and he draws back the doors of repentance then you'll you'll try to seek for him then but then it's going to be too late okay 
And we're going to laugh at you people. And don't be deceived. The Lord ain't mocked either. We're trying to do good unto you people. We're trying to give you this truth. And what do you do? You reject us constantly, man. You know, that's why the Lord eventually is going to make us hunters. Right now we're fishing. But eventually we're going to be hunters and we're going to fucking slay you people, man. In the presence of Yahweh Shai. Okay. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 9. In verse 5, they will deceive everyone his neighbor. Our people are deceivers and they're deceived by others themselves. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. That's why they're speaking lies. They don't want to hear the truth. They're corrupt. They're abominable. They're, they're not pure. They don't have pure intentions. People will come around you just to get close to you and destroy you. Okay. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. So our people, they weary themselves to commit iniquity. What does that mean? When it comes to committing iniquity to our people, they get excited. They can't wait to do something wicked. Okay? They, they become um, overly, overly involved in doing wickedness, man. They just can't wait to them to commit sin it's like a sport it's a fun activity and they can't really get a rush or an adrenaline rush i should say without doing some wickedness because they're of their father the devil they weary themselves man they're impatient they, they just have to be niggards okay they have taught their tongue to speak lies so they they taught themselves to speak lies because the thing is, we're out here teaching you the truth and you're rebelling against it because you're you're making yourself believe the lies that you hear. You don't want to believe this truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Now, what I want to do is go to Isaiah chapter 30 and verse eight. Now, go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for a time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people so like that nigga that just walked up here he came up here like he was cool he went from being cool to all of a sudden he missed or know it all he, he knows everything right that's why the people gonna kill a lot of israelites and when i say kill i don't mean that in a symbolic manner the lord is going to slay a lot of you fucking israelites okay Man, you people in general going to die. All you people who done laughed and mocked us and tried to make us out to be some 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 sickos or we're crazy or whatever. The Lord going to get you so good, man. The Lord going to make you people suffer in agony. You're going to be screaming and crying for help. It ain't going to be funny then for you. It's going to be funny for us, though. You people have no idea, man. You know, the Lord has even... Um, allow this truth to spread more and more. So what's the excuse? What do you people have as an excuse to keep playing these games? To keep rejecting this word? Okay? Now, when you're in a camp, it's a little easier to deal with these fucking knuckleheads, man. But when you be out here alone, although we understand it's about the elect, the Lord's blinding these people, sometimes, hey, things get to feeling personal. Although it ain't personal, things get to feeling personal sometimes. You be ready to fucking kill people when the Lord give you that power, man. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I'm a man, all right? I'm a man. And a lot of you people, you don't understand how men operate. Isaiah 30 and 9, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. So when you come speaking them bullshit ass lies, you come out here soft spoken. You come out here, you know, trying to appease the women or appease to the masses of people. People listen to you then. But when you out here speaking the truth and you bold about it and you mean what you say, hey, people want to make you the enemy. Okay? That's just how it goes, man. Let's go to John chapter 15. 
and 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. So the Lord is removing the cloak of excuses off of our people through his servants, the prophets. When you people lay eyes on us, when you come commune with us, even if you avoid us, you try to like go around us. The fact that you lay eyes on us, the Lord marked you, man. Okay? You people are like on a gigantic conveyor belt. And every time you come across the man of the Lord, you've been scanned, you've been marked. Okay? If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin because the Israelites have woken up from the graves. And now, seeing that the Israelites have woken up from the graves, the Lord has given certain men a particular spirit to preach and to prophesy in the open. So there's no excuses. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. Verse 24. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. So all the Lord's enemies to hell with all of you. Because even with seeing the, the signs and miracles that Yahweh Shai had shown back then, people still didn't want to believe. How much more right now? We're not out here performing miracles. We're just normal guys. Plus we're in a, in a uh, time and age where people aren't spiritual here in the West, okay? People claim to be spiritual here in the West. The West is just, just a, a, a place just full of just, just slop. It's hard to explain it here, man. There's really no real spirituality, no real spirituality here in the West. Everything that people do here, they water it down. You try to be a Muslim here, it's a watered down version. You try to be a so-called Christian here, it's a watered down version. Like the West is not a spiritual society, man. It's spiritual and wickedness. It's spiritual when it comes to, you know, performing witchcraft and what not to be and what not to do. But the West, okay, the Western Hemisphere is horrible, man. All right? And we come out here letting you people know what it is, whether you want to hear or whether you forbear. And it's just clearly shown that y'all don't care. All right? So let's go forward. To Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 7. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is abomination to my lips. So although our people want to hear smooth things. My job is to what? Speak the truth. Because that's what the Lord wants. Okay. The Lord wants us to bring it out. The Lord don't want us holding back no information. Because people's feelings might get hurt. The Lord has us in a whole different spirit, a whole different vibe, man. Proverbs 8 and 7, for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. So wickedness is an abomination to the lips of the elect. We're not out here with the intent of trying to put you to sleep with lies, man. We're out here to hit you with this truth. And now people have made us the enemy for it, which is all good, man. Because I hate you people too. Matter of fact, I hate you people more than what you hate me and my brothers. Believe that. Y'all don't even know. I hate you people. Okay? And any brother who might not feel like that, that's him. I'm not him. I hate you people. If you're not of Yahweh Shai, if you've heard this word especially and you just deny it, you avoid it, you do everything in your power to act like it ain't, uh, like it don't exist, like it ain't real, I hate you. I don't care what everybody else is saying in the truth. Somebody else could say, oh, well, I don't hate you. Or, you know, I wish you wake up. Man, fuck you, man. I hate you people. You're either going to get it or you're not. All right? I'm not, I'm not here to play patty cake. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. And you want to know what's truth? America's going to be destroyed. All you wicked people in it. All you wicked ass people, when the time comes, you're going to receive the mark of the beast. The Lord's going to fucking melt you. All you Israelites who's playing games, you don't have a pure intent. You're pretending. You're a pretendo Israelite. The Lord going to kill you. All you Israelites who are walking in righteousness, walking in good, in good pleasure, walking in good faith of the Lord or towards the Lord, I should say. You're going to be rewarded. You're going to have a righteous man's reward. 
Look, we're out here to speak the truth. The Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, we're the biblical Israelites based off of your father's line. It's not about your mother. It's not about what you look like. We come out and we say these things. We're speaking the truth unto you, letting you know we're the former of all things, right? And you don't make no account of our labor. The truth being, we're the Lord's people. And a lot of you people who are of the Lord's people, you're going to die. Because although there are Israelites everywhere, the majority of you are useless. And that's the truth. Okay, and I'm not going to lie to you. Let's go to Proverbs 14. In verse 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Let me jump back to 25. A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. So we're delivering souls through this truth. If you don't receive this truth, you're not going to be delivered. You're rather going to be destroyed. And as um, often as you see brothers all throughout the world doing this, you notice people are in the same spirit every time they see us. They just walk by us, man. You know, you see a person walking. You know, just, it's weird. Now, although it's the Lord doing it, of course, but from our perspective still, it can kind of get to you every now and again because you're putting time and effort, you know, really trying to um, explain the truth to the best of your ability and people are just pretending like you don't exist. You know, people don't know what that does to you until they themselves are going through it okay especially when you out here alone man you you take things a little more personal it's almost like yeah although they're rejecting the lord they're rejecting you when you was shy it's almost like they're rejecting you because <laughs> you're the vessel that's being used okay a true witness delivereth souls but a deceitful witness speaketh lies and that's what our people want to hear. They want to hear smooth things. They want to hear lies. They don't want to hear about this economy collapsing. They don't want to hear about America's destruction. They don't want to hear about an EMP attack coming and things going black and not having no electricity, not being able to go to your ATM, not being able to withdraw money. You don't want to hear about that. You want to hear about how to get rich. You want to hear about how to take a man's woman. You want to hear about how to break in a house. You want to hear about how to, um, you know, commit adultery, sell dope all in one day through a hip hop song. <laughs> That's what you want to hear. Verse 26, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. And that's not everybody. The Lord's children are those who pertain to the household of faith. The children of the light. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. To depart from the snares of death. And if you're not with that, you're just going to die. Let's go to Proverbs 29 and verse 12. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. So guess what? Those in power, they've lied to the whole world. They've deceived the whole world. That's why people look at us as strange. Because you people are under a weird, awkward vibration. We are in some very, very strange times, man. Okay? Now, although we're in some strange times, these days were prophesied. These days were already explained to us, man. And we're actually living in it. We are in some very perilous times. Some very troublesome, hard-to-bear times. Okay? If a ruler hearkened to lies and Esau eat him, he's hearkened unto lies. In fact, he's the father of lies. Okay? All his servants are wicked, and all you all you people are just as good as your government. Your governments be lying to you. Those in power who run the whole world, they've lied to you, man. And that's why a lot of you, you have a hard time trying to ponder on what the truth is and what's not true. Because you've been lied to by the elites. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them 
that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Mashiach, who was the image of God, should shine unto them. So most of our people, they're going to remain in this dark um, state of mind until the day that the Lord Yahweh by Shemi Shai destroys them. Because he's not looking for everybody. He's only looking for the elect. All right. And they're going to remain in that dark state of mind till the Lord destroys them. Isaiah 6 and 9. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed. Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. So Esau has blinded the world. And he's blinded the world being a goddamn devil. And a lot of these people who he's blinded through lies and, you know, just evil philosophies through vain deceit. Most of them are going to remain. I'm speaking about the Israelites. Most of you are going to remain in that dark state until the day that the nuclear missiles get sent off to eat you alive. Okay. Verse 11. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. And that's coming through what? Thermal nuclear destruction. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 13. In verse 17, behold, I will stir up the Medes, speaking of Russia, against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Because the Lord is going to put a cold spirit on Russia to be in the spirit of warfare, to be in the spirit of that ancient USSR spirit, the spirit of bloodshed. Okay? Their bows, speaking of their missiles, shall dash the young men to pieces. So rather someone's young, old, okay? Rather someone's blind, rather someone's handicapped in other various ways. If they're here in that day, if they're not written in the book of life, they're going to be destroyed. Their bows also shall dash the young man to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon being America, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, which was an area in Mesopotamia, shall be as when the power overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Fire and brimstone rain from the heavens. Well, fire and brimstone is going to rain from the heavens again. Okay? This time through gigantic bullets known as missiles. Okay? You think... Uh, these different nations are getting these fighter jets ready for nothing. Okay. It's what they call F-16, F-16 F fighter jets. It shall never be inhabited, speaking of America, after its destruction. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. All right. So we're coming into a time where America is going to be left totally desolate and those of you who are in darkness if you're not of the elect you're going to remain in that darkness until that day comes that america is left desolate destroyed wiped off the face of the map forever okay let's go to revelations chapter 11 in verse 12 and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them and this is going into the elect being delivered out of the destruction to come through the strangeness of their salvation it's going to be them ascending up into a huge uh, so-called spaceship what the bible will call clouds chariots stars okay and other code names horses and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell. Speaking of all America. So all of America is going to be destroyed. How long are you Israelites going to uh, remain in that dark state that you're in 
until all of America, all 10 parts are destroyed. And it's broken down into 10 parts um, based off of the FEMA, how, how FEMA has it region. Okay. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, which is going to be caused by the missiles. And the 10th part of the city, which is all the city, fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, which is a complete number of men. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the power of heaven. Speaking about the elect. The second woe being World War II is past. And behold, the third woe being World War III cometh quickly. And that's the season we're in right now. So as I come out here with the pure intent to give our people the truth, our people don't want to hear it. And this is the dumbest time ever to reject this word. That's why it's going to be so beautiful, man. When this society finally collapses and all hell breaks loose and to see you people suffer, to see you people in fear and questioning what's happening, what's going on. Man, I'm going to laugh at you people. I might even spit on you if I see you on the ground suffering and walk by you and not even really uh, uh, flinch a muscle, man. Not even blink an eye. Just, just stare at you. Just spit at you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck you people. You know? We've, we've been out here crying our hearts out to you people. Even my teachers who's been out here for years on out. So there's no excuse. Okay? The men who have been laboring before me and I've entered into their labors. This word has been pumping for quite a while now so there's really no excuse that's why we're in the time of world war three second thessalonians chapter two and verse eight and then shall the wicked be revealed speaking of esau the so-called white man whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Speaking of, which it can be twofold, the spirit of his mouth being when he shows up in a gigantic spaceship and the uh, laser beams get the blasting and zapping people with thunderbolts and also through the mouth of his prophets. Okay? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Speaking of the elites of Esau, Edom, on down to the rest of their nation. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, which is another way of saying deceit. And them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So it's, it's funny how a lot of our people are going to be destroyed over something so simple. Receiving the truth. But see, the Lord is blocking people. The Lord does not want most people to receive this. That's why most people, they just act as they do. They pretend like we don't exist, man. You think a woman could really do this job? In fact, if a woman was to do this job, people probably would stop for them just to watch um, how fat they titties look when they move, right? Or just to observe their beauty. But people wouldn't be up here listening to women. But let's say women were doing this, man, and they had to go through what we went through. They would have been quit. You got people who quit um, putting up YouTube videos who are in the world because they feel in their mind, well, if I'm not getting 50,000 plus views, I need to just hang it up, right? They end up giving up, just throwing in the towel. You people have no idea what we have to bear. You, know, you, don't, you don't know what it's like, okay? That's why it's going to be so beautiful when the Lord destroys the most of you. It's going to be so beautiful. It's going to be a, a, a beautiful horror movie in the times to come. Because you don't want the truth. Let's go to Romans chapter 2. In verse 8. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. So the Lord's anger is going to fall upon all you people who are contentious towards this word. You're rebellious towards this word. You don't want nothing to do with it. Let's go to Proverbs 13. 
and 13. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. So that's the judgment. Those of you who despise the truth, you're going to be destroyed. But those of you who take heed, those of you Israelites who listen and hearken, okay, you're going to be blessed. But that's not for most people. I'll probably bring out a couple of more and I'm going to go on ahead and close it up. So this is 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And how ye turn to the power from idols to serve the living and true power. And that's what it's about, serving the true power, having pure intent, okay? And to wait for his son from heaven, who he raised from the dead, even Yahweh Shai, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So we're waiting on Yahweh Shai to deliver us from the wrath of the Lord. And how is that going to happen? Because we're obedient to the word. We have faith in the word. And who is the word? According to the Holy Bible. It's Yahweh Shai, man. Who's the truth? Who's the answer? It ain't Allen Iverson. It's Yahweh Shai. Now, Allen Iverson comes out of the same nation of people as Yahweh Shai. But Allen Iverson ain't the answer. Allen Iverson ain't the way. Yahweh Shai is the way. Okay? And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Yahweh Shai, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So those who are to get delivered are going to be delivered from the wrath of the Heavenly Father. So I'm going to close it with John chapter 14 and verse 6. Yahweh Shai said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if you're disobedient to the truth, basically you're disobedient to Yahweh Shai, that means you're going to be destroyed. You're not going to be delivered from the wrath to come, but rather you're going to be left in the wrath to come. And that wrath to come is going to be from the Heavenly Father himself. Okay, so all you Israelites, you can do what you want at the end of the day, but if you're not, you know, trying to get your act together, the Most High is going to kill you. He's going to destroy you. Okay? And like I said, when you people start going through y'all's hell, when you're out here catching it, hey, I'm not going to blink. I'm not going to close my eyes and be like, oh my God, I'm going to open my eyes wide and watch you suffer. You're going to think this nigga bugged out. Like, why is this nigga looking at me like that? Because I'm, I want to watch this in, in HD in real time, nigga. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go on ahead and uh, wrap this up. I'm going to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. All right. And what is his name? Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Yahweh I got to get home, get ready for this damn job. Shalom.